Hey, what's up guys? Uh, Wolvis here. Um, perhaps you find this relatable, but uh, I've recently finished this new aircraft and this is the first time I'm gonna go, uh, I'm gonna go fly it. And uh, as you can see, it's a very nice aircraft. Uh, it, oh, uh, yeah, that's not, that's not what planes are, like, supposed to do. <laughs> if you've played Simple Planes before, then it's quite likely that you've noticed that sometimes it can be quite difficult to make your aircraft fly like a normal aircraft. Why are you gay? Now, there can be multiple reasons for this, and way too many to really address or troubleshoot in this video. So instead, what I'll be doing is I'll be teaching you the number one way to make literally fucking anything fly in simple plans. Now, I want you to realize that when I say anything, I genuinely mean anything. Alright, so let's get going on this. This tutorial will consist of two tiny parts. First, some theory. So, it's time for a little physics lesson. How to make the plane do the up. To explain it as simply as possible, just imagine this. Your aircraft has a mass. That mass is constantly being pulled down by gravity. This creates a downwards force on the mass. At the same time, if your aircraft has either semi-symmetric or flat bottom wings, your aircraft is creating an upward force in the form of lift. Now, the final important force working on our aircraft is thrust. In this case, we have a jet engine at the back of the aircraft, which results in our center of thrust being at the back of the aircraft. And this thrust creates a forwards force on our airframe. The trick to making an aircraft fly is balancing these three forces. Ideally, you want to ensure that the center of thrust, the center of lift, and the center of mass are on the same y-coordinate. Basically, you want it to be the way I have it displayed here. Now, of course, it is entirely possible that you don't do this, and you misalign these forces. However, that will make the whole process of simply making an aircraft fly a bit more complicated, and therefore I will ignore it in this video. Now. In order to make an aircraft actually fly, there is one more large piece to this puzzle. And this has to do with the position of the center of lift in relation to the center of mass. In virtually any situation, the center of lift should always be behind the center of mass. But that is, um, unless you want your plane to become a 1985 dance song. Now, there isn't necessarily one good way to determine how far back your center of lift should be from your center of mass. That said, a good rule of thumb to follow is to try to push the center of lift as close to the back of the center of mass as you can without making your aircraft become uncontrollable. I can already hear some of the physics nerds among you going, Wait a minute! That's not actually how aircraft work. And you're not wrong, the thing is just that within simple planes, this really is the only information that actually matters. Alright, now that we have been armed with this extreme knowledge, let's go make something fly. Part 2. The Practical. Alright, so normally this is the point when I whip out some garbage creation that I made myself. Look at this dude. <laughs> Wait till you see the... <laughs> Top of his head. <laughs> However, this time I wanted to knock out two birds with one stone. So instead, I went onto the Simple Planes website to look for a new player who needed some help making your creation fly. That's why I came across this post by Beth uh, who basically was asking for some help making his aircraft actually fly. All right, so here we have his uh, airplane, and I think I can already see a problem. Uh, it looks like there's no wings. And, well, as soon as we try to fly it, that shows, because this is as close to a flying brick as you can get. So let's go change that. Before we even start placing any blocks, it's important to understand where our center of mass, center of lift, and center of thrust are. 
We can do this by opening the in-game menu and then navigating towards the center of mass lift and thrust button. This then shows us the different spheres corresponding to each of the different forces. Now that we know where the center of mass is located, let's give ourselves a center of lift. We can do this by adding some wings. Personally, I always like to use the structural wing because it's a bit more sturdy than the normal primary wing. And with the help of some simple XML modding, we can even add some control surfaces. After doing this, be sure that you go and change the aerofoil type of your wing. And then we can just add a simple aileron. From there on, we can go and reshape our wing to be about the size that we need it to be for it to produce enough lift to be able to fly with the amount of mass our aircraft has. Then we can proceed to mirror the wing to the other side of the aircraft and now it's time for a crucial step. As you can see, right now I'm moving forwards the two wings. This is because I noticed that the center of lift and the center of mass are quite far apart. So I decided to push the center of lift further forwards towards the center of mass. If we now try to fly this aircraft, you'll notice that Bruh. If we now try to fly this aircraft, you'll notice that it will actually fly a lot more like a plane instead of a brig. However, you can still see that there's some improvement to be made, primarily because, well, we're still missing a tail. Your standard aircraft tail consists of two main components. First, a set of horizontal stabilizers paired with a vertical stabilizer. It is important to note that for both vertical and horizontal stabilizers, it is true that the further they are away from the center of mass and the center of lift, the more authority they have over the airframe. However, just keep in mind that if you push this too far towards one end of the extreme, you'll still end up with an aircraft that's hard to fly or barely flyable at all. Because of this, I suggest that through trial and error, you try to find the best tail position for your aircraft. In this case, I just reused the primary wing, because I'm rather lazy, and resized it to make our horizontal stabilizer. I myself always like to change the aerofoil type of my horizontal stabilizers to one less than my primary wing. Because my primary wing is flat bottom here, I'm changing the aerofoil type of the horizontal stabilizers to semi-symmetric. Then I proceed to go on and add a control surface with a pitch input so that we have a set of elevators, after which I add a vertical stabilizer. While doing this, I make sure that I change the aerofoil type to symmetric and that I change the control surface input to yaw. When we now try to test fly this creation, we'll notice that it's still fairly unstable and also quite hard to control. This is because right now our tail controls are far too close to our main wings. Making use of the fine tuner mod, I simply just move the tail a bit backwards. To give both the vertical and the horizontal stabilizer slightly more authority, I increased their size. After which, I performed yet another test flight, and it is then that I found that, even though the elevators have enough authority, this aircraft still doesn't really like to pitch up. I think this is because our wings just don't create enough lift to carry the mass of our aircraft. Now, in order to increase the amount of lift our aircraft has, all we need to do is just make our two front wings larger. If we now test fly this, we'll notice that we did indeed make our aircraft want to pitch up more. However, because of this extra lift, it has now also become quite unstable. Whee! We can simply solve this issue by changing the Y and the Z coordinates of our primary wings in order to properly align the center of lift with the center of mass. Remember, the balance between these two is extremely important in making your plane fly properly. If we now test fly this creation once more, we'll notice that it's almost perfect. There's only one little issue left, and that's the extreme tail waggle, but that's fairly easily fixable. We can do this by either increasing the size of a vertical stabilizer or by simply pushing it further back compared to our center of mass. After just another simple test flight, it is time to add a power plant. Feel free to use whatever source of thrust you like. In this case, I'll just simply use this jet engine and I'll make sure that I align the center of thrust with the center of lift and the center of mass. Also, if you're installing a jet engine and you don't yet have air intakes on your aircraft, uh, make sure that you include those as well. And after that, we've basically created a fully functional flying aircraft. Now, to go the extra mile so that we don't ruin the aesthetic of Biffe's beautiful creation, we can make sure that no one will be able to see both the wings and the engine. We can do this by selecting every part that we added using Fine Tuner, and then scaling all of these parts 
by 0.0001 on both length, height and width. This basically makes every part completely invisible, but it does retain their physical features. This results in this absolutely epic creation. All right, so now that I've discussed with you how to make literally anything fly in simple planes, I want to quickly mention once again that this tutorial is really meant as a guide on how to make a non-flying object a flying object. In terms of actually fixing aircraft or troubleshooting your plane that's not flying very well, well, there's tons of different techniques you could use that I didn't mention, one of which would, for example, include artificial stability. That said, if you do still have some issues of flying after this tutorial, then I suggest that you ensure the drag of your airplane is symmetric, check the alignment of the center of mass, center of lift, center of thrust on both the X and Y axis once again, make sure that your aircraft creates enough lift, perhaps also check your aerofoil type and establish your vertical and horizontal stabilizers have enough authority. Okay, and on that note, I think it's time to start concluding this video. I wanna thank all of you guys. Uh, I made a video about a week ago about afterburners and simple planes and the response has been phenomenal, so thank you. Um, and if you'd like that video, and if you like this video, then please do consider subscribing, uh, because I intend on making a lot more of these videos in the future. Uh, by the way, if you have any ideas or suggestions for potential topics I could make a tutorial on, uh, let me know, because I'm looking for some ideas for future videos. And also, I want to thank Buffet very much for letting me use his awesome tank build in this video. If you would like to try it out for yourself, you can download it in the description. And with that, I would like to thank you very much for watching, and I wish you a great day.